Welcome to Fresh Off the Set. I'm Carrie Hawker Diaz, and I am so excited for today's podcast. I am here with Rufus Tolbert. He's the Multicultural Outreach Specialist, and Mark Dixon, the Director of Public Education and Public Relations for Donor Connect. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. It is a pleasure, Carrie. Thank you for having us. Of course. I'm glad to see you again. Great to see you too. Yes, Rufus, you were just on the show, so it's it's great to see you. Okay, so can you tell us more about Donor Connect and the important role it plays in the organ donation process in Utah and neighboring states? Um, I'll take this one, Rufus. Uh, Donor Connect is what's known as an organ procurement organization, OPO for short. As an OPO, the government actually has designated um, the service area in which Donor Connect operates. And, and that's the case throughout the entire country. There are OPOs, just like Donor Connect, that serve specific areas of the country. So Donor Connect happens to have the entire state of Utah, a little section of southeastern Idaho, a little teeny section of Nevada, and a little bit of Wyoming. So that's our designated service area as an organ procurement organization. Okay, okay. What does your day-to-day job look like? Well, it just depends because there's so many different um, areas of Donor Connect. So you have everything from surgical teams, uh, recovery teams, you have our transportation team, our public education um, and relations team. Uh, so there's a, Donor Connect is a, is a big working organism and We've got a lot of little microorganisms. A lot of working, working parts. A lot of working parts in there. So, um, for but for a typical, um, let's just say that they they start a case. Um, it starts with someone's uh, in the hospital, and it has to be very specific conditions because only one percent of donors uh, that people that are signed up actually become organ donors. Oh wow! So a lot of people think that oh, there's you know a million plus people that are signed up to be organ donors. One percent. Only one percent because it has to be a very controlled environment and the circumstances have to be absolutely correct in order for that process to start. That's so why what, we need so many donors. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people, that, that's one of the things that people misunderstand is that they think that, that just because you sign up to be an organ donor means you will be an organ donor. That's not necessarily the case. Ah, it comes down to a lot of different factors. Yeah. It makes no sense for someone who is sick or ill to receive a, an organ, a, a eye, or tissue when it won't work. That's true. And mm-hmm. and so uh, doctors are very, very, very good at, at determining what those variabilities are, what the circumstances are that would allow a successful transplant to take place. Sure, sure. And so, and so while there are thousands and thousands of people on the organ donor registry, uh, when it comes right down to it, very few actually end up being organ donors. Mm, that's good to know. I don't think a lot of people know that. They don't. Then once that happens, then we just start a process where we have to get um, uh, blood and genetic matching and a bunch of different activations through, throughout the, the country to find out you know, who's, who's next in line and then how that's going to work, how we're going to get it there. Uh, because organs have a, um, a lifespan as well. Mm. So a heart, I think, is with four hours. So it can only mm. be four hours outside. So most, most heart transplants happen in the state of Utah. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, it might be going to California or something like that. But no. No, in Utah. Case. Yeah. yeah so if, Utah. if we recover a heart, it's going to stay within a, a, a geographic boundary that allows it to be sustainable when sure. it's transplanted. Four into hours. Yeah. yeah, there's a time Four limit. Mm-hmm. Okay, and organ donation, it can be a really sensitive topic for many people. How does Donor Connect work to educate people about organ tissue and eye donation while dispelling any misinformation that may exist? Well, Rufus um, commented on all of the moving pieces at Donor Connect, and among those moving pieces is public ed- education. And, mm. and Rufus and I are part of that public education and public relations team, and we have the opportunity to help tell the story. And so, yes, there are many, many misnomers about what organ, eye, and tissue donation is all about. Uh, a biggie, some people think that, well, I'm too old, mm. or I'm not healthy enough. Mm-hmm. And what we encourage people to do is don't make that determination yourself. Let a medical professional do that. That's probably smarter. Sign up yeah. to be a donor. <laughs> and then if the stars align 
and it works out that you're a, a, a candidate for organ, tissue, or eye donation, mm-hmm. then let the medical professional de- make that determination. Don't disqualify yourself at the onset because yeah. you think you're too old or you're not healthy. Yeah. So a lot of uh, other things that we do are our website at DonorConnect.life. Um, but then we're also in the communities. We're in our high schools, junior high schools. Uh, we have presenters that come out, and they will uh, talk about it have festivals, um, parades, things like that, that we're also just part of the community being involved in. So the people, when they have a question, they can come in and and they can ask that question. And what's the importance of that inclusive approach and how it can help and fulfill your mission? You know, one of the best examples of the community inclusiveness is at Library Square. Okay. The southeast corner of Library Square is the Celebration of Life Monument. I don't know if a lot of people know about that place, but if you go there, there are 20 different glass panels, each inscribed with names of people that have been organ tissue and eye donors. Wow. Tens of thousands of names are there. And, and these are people that are, are part of our community, people whose family members are inscribed on those glass plaques yeah. and who, who are organ tissue and eye donors. And it's a great place to, to be able to remember and to honor people that have sure. made that gift of life. And tell us where exactly that is again. It's at Library Square. It's okay. at the southeast corner. So that would be 4th f- uh, South and 5th. Uh, 500 South and 300 East. There we go. Okay. Rufus, that's right. So that's right there. That's really good to know right here yeah. in Utah. Thank you for that. Um, what Any other misinformation that you want to clear up that people think? I'm sure there's a lot. I see you both smiling. So, uh, yeah. Well, I, another one that comes <laughs> right off the, the top of my mind is the fact that um, – if you've got on your driver license that heart icon, yes, which indicates that you're willing to be an organ tissue and eye donor, that if you wind up in some sort of a, an, an accident, some situation where you need medical care, mm-hmm. that, that the doctors are going to look at that and go, oh, well, this person is, an, uh, is a donor, so we don't need to try as hard to save this person's Ooh, life. Okay. okay. And nothing could be further from the truth. A doctor does not look at your driver license. The whole discussion around organ tissue and eye donation doesn't ever even come up until maybe you're actually getting closer to to a a situation where people know that you're not going to recover. Sure. Yeah, so stay away from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, <laughs> don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe Grey's Anatomy. That's, that's uh, not that's true. That's probably one of the big things. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want people to know? Yeah, um, the the OPO world, the um, procurement organization world, is changing, um, just like the rest of the world. And so, for a long time, there were um, a lot of cultures that were concerned about becoming organ donors, and those things are changing. Um, where we're getting younger people from different cultures that maybe historically they felt that they should not um, become organ donors, but then also uh, things that have happened in 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 history um, with those kind of same things. So those things are changing. So there, there are laws that are being um, that changed, people that are, are standing up more and making those strides to become uh, organ donors because they're understanding that genetic matching is a big part of becoming an organ donor. Mm. And if you have a very small pool of people that would be a match, then you're less likely to get that transplant. So people of color need to become organ donors so the pool becomes bigger so they're more likely to get those transplants. Sure, that makes sense. And if someone is listening or right now thinking, you know what, I want to get involved. They've changed the way I'm thinking about it. Um, what opportunities are available for them to participate in supporting organ donation efforts in Utah and the surrounding areas? The very, very easiest thing that you can do is when you get a state identification or a driver license. That's where you see it, right? That's where I think is it's on yeah. your, your license. Yep. And, and all you have to do is check that box that says, yes, I would like to be an organ tissue and eye donor. Mm. That's the easiest way. Now, Utah has a uh, Utah, it's the Utah Organ Donor Registry. And basically, it's a large database with more than a million names of people in Utah who have made that choice to give the gift of life. Wow. They get there, 90% of the people in that database are there because they checked yes when they got a driver's license. Mm-hmm. The, the other people 
other, other people, you don't have to wait to get a driver license to get on there. If you go to donorconnect.life, there's a great big button on the front page of our website that says register now. Okay. And so by clicking register now, you can make your wishes known. So you don't have to have a driver's license necessarily. You do not. To you do be, not. Nope. Okay. And okay. then and to add to that, um, there's a, a lot of people that uh, come to the United States and say they're, they're from a different country and there are organ donors there. You don't have to be a citizen here to be oh, okay, good an to organ know. donor. You can go to our website. You can sign up. It's very minimal information. We're not asking you know for those kinds of things. It's not shared with the government or anything like that. But it gives them the opportunity to do what they were doing in their whatever country they, that they were from. Yeah. Um, to still be a part of, of making a difference by by sharing a part of themselves in their afterlife to have someone else live. To make a big impact for yes. somebody else, definitely. And I first thing when you said about driver's license, if someone wants to change it, say they've, and, and I don't, I'm not sure if you know this answer, but say they've checked no, or um, can they switch it without, does it have to be like where it's expired, it needs to come up again and you change it? What if someone is thinking, well, I, I, I'd like to do this and I'd like to do it today, but yeah. my ID doesn't expire for another six months? That's a great question. Basically, the information in the database is what we will, uh, what, what prevails. Okay. So if somebody says no when they get a driver's license and then they decide, yeah, I, I do want to do this, and they sign up, then they are in the database as having said yes. And conversely, if somebody said, yes, I want to be an organ tissue and eye donor, and then for whatever reason, they decide that it's not for them, they can access that database and they can uh, make modifications and adjustments to what what their wishes are. Okay, good to know. So you don't necessarily have to wait for your ID to expire and nope. to, you know, okay, so you can change it right away if you, you would like. You don't, yeah, you don't, you can change it at any time. And we encourage people to have a conversation with their family. Let, let, I'm, now, um, someone who is under the age of 18 years old can make their wishes known. Now, the, the parents ultimately get to decide what their minor children are going to do in any given situation. But if, uh, if a child has a conversation with their parents and says, hey, this is something that is important to me, well, then that's, that's a great family discussion to have and uh, for the parents to understand what the wishes of their child, their son or daughter might be. Sure, have yeah. those conversations. And it, and it may not be a, a heart, uh, heart you know, an organ like a heart that saves a life, but there's, um, if you think about burn victims, if you think about um, the other things that being a donor can actually mm-hmm. contribute to help other people in their life as well. So it's more than just, oh, it's a, it's, it saves a, you know, a heart saves a life. Sure. There, there's so many other parts of organ donation and eye and tissue donation, um, cornea transplants, things like that, which is just that thin layer of your, of your, of your eye that will, can give someone life sure. um, to be able to see. Yeah, kind of important. Kind of thing, yeah, yeah, we yeah for people that that you know can't see right now, but to to get that, um, so it's not necessarily that you know those aspects of it, but there's just so much more to it that people don't understand. Right, absolutely. Um, for those listening, are there any success stories or inspiring moments that I'm sure you guys see a lot that highlight the impact of organ donation and the work done by Donor Connect? It is a very inspiring place to work and. and to, to see the things around us that take place. And let me give you an example. Uh, two weeks ago, the recipient of a donor heart had the opportunity to meet the family oh. of, of their donor. And it was heart-wrenching in a wonderful, wonderful way. Mm-hmm. And so this family, wh- whose uh, wife and mother tragically had an illness and became a, the donor of a, of a heart. Uh, the, the husband and daughter of this individual was able to meet the person that received the heart. Wow. This was, this was uh, broadcast just two weeks ago, and it was a wonderful, wonderful story. And in the wake of such a tragic event, there was a little bit of, of silver lining knowing that mm-hmm. this other individual who's a wife and a mother, mm-hmm. was able to receive the gift of life, and her life continues. Yeah. And to, have the, to, to see the donor family take a stethoscope and listen to the heartbeat mm. 
in a different person, but to also know that the recipient had a child and the middle name of the child was a mother. Wow. Name. So that connection as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So th- those kinds of things. And, there, and then, I mean, and there's, there's tons of different stories that are like that, that, but yeah, that's what, that's what makes it meaningful because they were all young. And to think that this person now has an opportunity to be a mother mm. um, at what, 40? I she she's in her 30s. Actually. 30s. Yeah. yeah, but to be a mother when they gave her the diagnosis that she was going to pass away if she did not get a heart transplant. How powerful. I mean, we're talking life here. How powerful. And that must have been, because you said with a heart, you know, it's really about a four-hour window. So I imagine once the surgery, it was pretty soon after, like a few weeks after maybe the, the transplant that they... Well, uh, the, the organ recovery took place. And within a four-hour window... This recipient Man. had a, a new organ beating within her chest. Yeah. So it, it happens very fast. So yeah. that's, that's part of what our, our organization is. We have a lot of different steps, and we activate those different steps at different times, but within a very small window so that we can get what we um, to save a life. And I imagine each each family would be different on how they felt about, did they want to meet the person, you know, that, and, and that's an option you can follow up and... Yes. If you choose to do that. Donor Connect is very protective uh, of those persons that are involved in transplant and organ, uh, receiving organs. Very protective. And so we do facilitate communication, but it we're not allowed to share who the parties are. Yeah. But we, we can receive letters and facilitate communication. And then if both parties choose to meet one another... We, we can facilitate that as well. So it's not off limits that a recipient mm-hmm. meets the, the family of a donor. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. Yeah, it yeah. just has to be mutual. But it has sure. to be mutual. That makes yeah. sense. For sure. some, you know, some people, they, it's very difficult to know that, that one person has, has lived on. Sure. Their loved one has passed on. Absolutely. So, yeah. But for some, it's very inspirational. I'm sure it could be yeah. very healing for others yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah depending on what you want. They get into the medical field. Um, once they receive a transplant, they, you know, they, it just, it brings a different outlook on life mm-hmm. when you have that second chance. Mm-hmm. One of our colleagues who received a heart transplant wrote for 10 years to the family of, to the donor family mm-hmm. without hearing anything. 10 years. It's a long time. And, and each time that he wrote, basically he was giving an accounting to that family of what he was doing with his life. And after 10 years, finally, the family was ready to respond and to meet the recipient. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and that's yet another wonderful story that um, emphasizes and punctuates the importance of, uh, of what we do. Sure. Very powerful. I'm tearing up over here, you guys. It, it is, you know, to hear the actual stories, it's, it's really special. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Rufus, you spoke about this a little bit about the landscape of organ donation evolving over the years. What challenges and opportunities that you can see might lie ahead for your organization, like, you know, Donor Connect? That, that's an interesting question because as, as society changes, so does um, kind of some of the roles that we t- take at Donor Connect. Um, our biggest thing, and I think, is, is educating people so that they can feel more comfortable mm-hmm. and to address the, um, the past trauma of what's happened when it comes into the medical world uh, of the mistrust or the, the distrust of those kinds of things. But for Donor Connect, we are, we're very forward thinking um, and we're doing everything that we can to, to be in the communities to let people know that, hey, these are the laws that are changing. These are the things that are changing. And I, th- I think that's, that's one of the things that, that has drawn me to Donor Connect is that they're very forward thinking and it's like, what can we do in the future to, to keep what we're doing? Keep as, educating. As, as important as it is. Um, yeah. We are a tier one um, OPO. So there's three tiers, and we've been at the, the top tier for quite a few years because of uh, the way that we forward think and the way that we go out in the community and give back and assist people in, in understanding and knowing the importance of it, but also that Donor Connect is uh, an organization that gives back. So we're not just here to say, hey, please sign up, but we're here to say, hey, if you need help, we're here to help as well. Yeah, yeah, very powerful, you guys. Um, Are there any specific initiatives or 
partnerships that Donor Connect is currently focusing on to further its mission of saving and improving lives through donation. Uh, Carrie, I'll share with you that just last week, last Friday, Donor Connect organized and hosted the very first transplant growth initiative that has taken place in in our country. Wow. Transplant growth initiative. Basically, because of, as, me, as, as Rufus mentioned, we're a tier one organ procurement organization. That means mm-hmm. we're top performing. We Donor Connect is among the very, very best, most efficient um, and effective. I feel like that deserves a. Yeah, <laughs> let's give us a round of applause. Good job, you guys. And, and so because of that, we, we felt like we were qualified to uh, bring together very exemplary uh, stakeholders within the organ procurement organization community and the medical community in general and host this uh, transplant growth initiative or collaboration, which took place on Friday. And so we had people from all over the country. We came, we together, we talked about best practices and how those best practices can be uh, shared and propagated uh, among other um, medical facilities and organ procurement organizations throughout the country. So we're proud of that. You should be. (laughs) Congrats. That's a big step. Yes, definitely. That's a a big step in unity. Yeah. Um, And and also bringing together and making things better. I think that's that's the most important thing is trying to make things better for Mm -hmm. all. Equality for all, not just for some, but for for everyone to to have an equal opportunity to get the transplant if needed. Mm. Thank you so much for all the work you guys are doing. It's it's so powerful, especially when you hear those stories. It hits it hits close to home. You hear that, and you're just you know you want to help. Um, lastly, what message would you like to leave our listeners with regarding the importance of registering as o- organ donors and supporting the cause of organ donation? What is your message? Organ, eye, and tissue donation doesn't start when someone, a family member, an individual is in the hospital and and facing the possibility of, of death. That's not when it starts. Uh, Rufus hinted about the public education efforts that we make. Mm-hmm. And we are in junior high schools with our presenters touching 40,000 kids during any given school year with information that will help them make decisions. And so uh, it's about education. It's about having conversations with your family and uh, and, and it's about embracing the fact that people truly can save lives, make a difference, and, and, and just that simple act of either checking your driver license box or going to DonorConnect.life and signing up to be a donor, that simple act can have such a ripple effect, mm. touching so many, many lives uh, and generations, really. It's a generational kind of a thing. Sure. Uh, it's like it's one of the things that I live by is you never know how far your ripple effect will go. So make a big splash. Why not? Right? Why not? You guys, this was this was awesome. I learned a lot. I'm sure our listeners did too. And you've given us some valuable information. If we would like more, what's the best place to go? What's your suggestion? DonorConnect.life um, is probably the, the easiest way to do that. We have a lot of information there. Our contact information is there. Um, so just go to the website. That's uh, donorconnect.life. And anything that you can't find there, give us a call. We're more than happy to answer it. Uh, we'll be in a lot of the local communities and events that are happening um, throughout the year. Uh, we have events that are, are that we put on at our um, at our memorial. Um, we have things that we, we have races that we do uh, each year. In fact, uh, next, the 27th, we're doing the St. George uh, Heroes in Disguise race. And then we've got our race up uh, at Sugar House Park in August. So just um, we're just out there in the community trying to do those things. And so people will be there that they can come and just ask the question. Once you start asking the question, you become yeah. more educated. You can make a better decision. And hopefully that decision is to help save lives. And make that splash. And make the splash. Thank you so much, Rufus and Mark, for being here today. We appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you. And thank you for listening to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. Please rate, review, and subscribe. And we will see you next week.
Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.